Every protein that sits in a cell membrane is affected by the in-plane mechanical tension in the membrane. Membrane tension affects uh, gating of mechanosensitive ion channels. It can affect the uh, formation and uh, fusion of uh, membrane vesicles, and it can affect the dynamics of the underlying cytoskeleton. It's interesting to ask how a perturbation to the tension in one part of a cell affects the tension in other parts of the cell. Could membrane tension serve as a long-range mediator of signaling processes so that perturbations here can rapidly affect something going on on the other side of the cell? Imagine the following simple experiment. Suppose we take a cell and we use a little pipette to pull a, a uh, membrane tether from the cell. And then we take a second pipette and we pull a second tether. We'll now uh, pull on this tether and ask how long does it take for the influence of that tug to affect the tension in the other tether. Let's turn this into a multiple choice problem. The time for the signal to propagate could be um, less than a second, uh, up to 10 seconds, or 100 seconds. So let's call less than one second option A, between one and 10 seconds option B, between 10 and 100 seconds option C, and greater than 100 section, seconds option D. A bleb is a little blister of cell membrane that has lifted off the surface of the cell. When we did uh, this experiment on a cell which had a bleb on it, and uh, so let's name our uh, tethers one and two, and we measured uh, the tension uh, in both tethers. Uh, we found that when we tugged on tether one, we almost instantly saw a response in tether two and vice versa. Uh, there was very tight coupling between the tension in these uh, two tethers with a millisecond uh, time scale um, uh, between the two. And so this corresponds to option A. We then repeated the experiment on an intact cell membrane. and saw a totally different uh, response. In this case, when we uh, increased the tension in tether one, we saw no response whatsoever in tether two. And when we increased the tension in tether two, we saw no response at all in tether one. Even if we waited 10 minutes, we never saw any coupling between the tension in these two tethers. So why is it that we see such dramatically different behaviors between the pure membrane and the membrane sitting on the cell? In cells, the membrane sits atop the cytoskeleton. And there are many, many transmembrane proteins which uh, span the membrane and are tethered to the cytoskeleton. These proteins act as obstacles to the membrane flow. A peculiar feature of two-dimensional flows is that they are exquisitely sensitive to uh, even a low density of obstacles. This is familiar to anybody who's ever eaten some jello. In the jello, the long collagen fibers uh, act as obstacles to flow, and they set up a basically two-dimensional flow profile perpendicular to the axis of the fibers. And we all know that a 2% uh, collagen gel behaves mechanically more like a solid than a liquid. In the context of the cell membrane, at physiological densities of transmembrane obstacles, uh, the resistance to flow can be up to 10,000 times higher than the resistance for the bare membrane. The uh, consequence, of, so, so when you pull on the membrane, um, the membrane can stretch or it can um, um, flow relative to the underlying substrate. And the balance of those two forces causes perturbations to the tension to uh, propagate diffusively through the membrane. And the diffusion uh, coefficient for this propagation of membrane tension is uh, uh, dependent on the stretch modulus of the membrane.
it depends on a parameter called the Darcy permeability, which captures the uh, effect of the obstacles on the flow resistance of the membrane. And it depends inversely on the viscosity of the membrane. Based on our measurements in multiple cell types, we found that this diffusion coefficient for membrane tension is about 0.02 microns squared per second, which is a very small number. This diffusion coefficient has nothing to do with the diffusion coefficient of uh, tracers, of, for instance, individual lipids within the membrane. This is a different physical quantity. This model and the experimental results suggest that tension is not a mediator of long-range signaling within cells. Perturbations to tension that are local remain localized. On the other hand, that implies that uh, tension might have heterogeneities across a cell and mediate different processes in different parts of the cell. So it can mediate local signaling. The fact that the Darcy permeability is so sensitive to the density of transmembrane obstacles also suggests that cells might dynamically regulate the density of these obstacles and control the propagation or the, um, of tension through the cell. These speculations illustrate that there's still a lot to learn about the coupling of membrane mechanics to cell physiology.